4.3, rates of change in applied context other than motion. Here we go. Assume this crazy log represents the number of gallons of water in a container over nine minute period. All right, so G of T is that. All right, now, technically you're gonna want to find the derivative of all three of these. I mean, the derivative of this, first derivative and second derivative, which means you want three equations. G, G prime, and G double prime. And I made pictures of them down here. Okay, I made pictures of them down here. All right, so just so you know, G of T is the red one. All right, the blue one is G prime T, and the green one is G double prime T. All right, just so you know that I made a quick little graph which you would probably want to to help you understand to analyze it. But you also want to do is practice taking your derivatives, and you want to take the derivative by hand and write out the actual derivatives possibly too to practice that if they want that. Okay, um, so you want to be able to write the derivatives and so forth. Now, on the notes, I do actually want you to write the derivatives of practice, and then you can check to see by graphing them, see if it matches. It's good practice of taking derivatives. All right, there's usefulness of it. It's good help to practice. But I'm not going to do it right now because of space and time. I don't want to take forever taking these ugly derivatives. Okay. So, let's answer this question. How many gallons of water are in the container at t equals 4? Now, real quick, are you okay that the container has... Six gallons of water at time zero. And then at time two, it has five point something. Maybe seven. Depending, look, they're going by two, so it might be even seven ish. And then over here at seven, can you see it has four gallons of water? Can you see how this, this container is filling but also leaking? Think of it as a leaking container that's also being filled at the same time. But it depends on if it's filling or leaking, it kind of mixers both together. We're talking the number of gallons in this container. So how many gallons of water are in the container at t equals 4? So what that means is I just want g of 4. It's as simple as that. So at 4, g of 4 is right here. Now we can't tell by looking at the graph, but we can tell it's probably 6 point something. So what you do is you technically need to use a computer calculator. These are calculator problems, by the way. You must use a calculator for them. But you would use some sort of calculator, simply plug in 4, and your exact answer or your answer to three decimal places is as follows. That's what you should get. And make sure you put units. Again, oh, AP wants three decimal places, truncated or rounded to three decimal places. So we're going to get practice doing that. So just assume always three decimal places, unless otherwise stated. So you simply use a calculator for that. Next one. The instantaneous rate of change at t equals 8. So the instantaneous rate of change of the water. So isn't that really just saying g prime and at 8? Are you okay with that? Instantaneous rate of change means the slope, the derivative at 8. So wouldn't that be right here? Because isn't that the g prime function at 8? So it isn't going to be about negative 1 point something. Negative 1 point something. Now, could you technically use a comp calculator, take a derivative, and plug in 8? Could you do it in some way with technology here? Just use technology, set it up. This is set up, and then you can use technology to do the crunching for you. All right? Or you can do the whole derivative and plug it in by hand, but it's going to get really ugly, very ugly, and you can't really do it by hand. It'd be nasty. So the answer technically, when you plug it in a calculator, you will get negative 1.44. I must have only put two decimals because it kind of like truncates somehow. Um, I don't know why again. Or maybe there's a zero afterwards, but gallons per minute. Are we okay? It's gallons per minute because it's gallons in minutes and it's a rate. And I can look at the picture for it. So next, carefully describe what G double prime one represents in context of the problem. What is G double prime one? What is this value right here represent? What is that negative about 0.8 what does negative 0.8 or whatever number that is mean? Well, let's talk about it. And that's really important. They really like you to understand the context and writing it out. So let me write this carefully. You have to be very careful how you write this. And um, here we go. So at t equals 1 or at 1 minute, 
Are you okay with that? At t equals 1 or 1 minute, you can kind of write it either ways. The rate, oops, let me kind of give a little bit more space in between letters. The rate of the water, of the water in the container, all right, is decreasing, all right, by, well, the answer, I'll just tell you, is 0.561 gallons per minute per minute. And that would be something like this that you have to say. So let's talk about this. All right, are you okay? That's about negative 0.561. If you look at that, it kind of makes sense because you're going by twos. That seems reasonable. And I did a calculator version of that. It didn't say to what get the answer, but if you stuck one into the second derivative, you get this number. Now, le listen carefully how I said this. At t equals one, that's important because that's when. The rate, keyword here, it, rate is actually really important. Because the rate means I'm already at a derivative. Do you understand? I'm talking about the rate. And then the second key word that's very important is decreasing. So watch carefully. If I say the rate, which is g prime, isn't the rate decreasing, which is also saying, when I say decreasing, isn't that saying the rate derivative is negative? When I say the word decreasing, I'm saying the derivative of rate is negative. When I say decreasing, I'm saying the derivative of rate is negative. So that's why I didn't put a negative on here. Technically, the answer was negative 0.561. The answer was negative 0.561, but I put the word decreasing to the rate. So if I take a rate and I decrease it, I'm in a second derivative. G prime is your rate. Decreasing means the rate of the rate, negative, that much. And there's my units. They're very picky on words here. And over time, you'll get very good at this, but I struggle with it. I have to always double think, triple think, make sure I'm doing it good. It can be very picky and weird. So we're continuing this problem. Picture of it of them are right here. Remember, technically, the axes, um, they shouldn't be graphed together because the axes for each one, this one here is um, gallons for the y-axis. This one right here is um, gallons per minute, and this one's gallons per minute per minute. Technically, the outputs are different units, so it's kind of bad, but I'm using it to save space. For what values of T is the amount of water increasing at a rate of one gallon per minute? Do you see how I use the word amount, but then I also say the word increase? And then if you look carefully, look at the units. The units give away something. If I say an amount is increasing, doesn't the word increasing mean derivative of amount? Word increasing means derivative up. Derivative is positive of an amount. So wouldn't that mean gallons per minute? It's a rate of gallons. So for what values is that true? Okay, so what is this saying? What is it saying? It's wanting you to know when g prime of t equals 1. That's really all it's saying. It wants the rate of g equaling 1. Now, if I said decreasing by 1, wouldn't this be a negative 1? If I said decreasing by 1, wouldn't I have a negative 1 here? Yes, but I said increasing. So be careful. That's another trickiness. So look at your graph. We want to see where is g prime equal to 1. All right, so if we look at it, okay, I have g prime down here. Where is it equal to 1? Isn't it equal to 1 somewhere in here? We want to be somewhere in there. Let me, let me just make a guess. Isn't it maybe right around here? Does that look like the y value of g prime is 1? Somewhere around there. Now, if we actually solve this, if we actually took this right here and solved it, if you take the derivative function, equaling it to 1, use the calculator to crunch it, and find your values, you would get at t equals, or approximately, 0.349 minutes. That would be your answer if you took the time, which is about where I kind of pointed out, if you look at it. But you'd use a calculator to crunch, set this equal to this, and solve it using some sort of technology. Next, 
for what values of t is the water level changing direction? So I want the water level changing directions. The keyword's changing directions. So to get a change of directions, all right, don't we first want to find where g prime t equals zero? To change direction, doesn't the rate have to stop? To change directions, meaning it was going up, and now it's going down. Or it was going down, and now it's going up. Don't we want where the velocity, or the, sorry, the rate is equal to zero? And we want to make sure it, that it changes, so that and changes, oops, I can't write, signs. We also want it to change signs. So let's look. Where is the velocity equaling zero? Well, I'm sorry, the velocity, the rate equaling zero. Isn't the rate equaling zero somewhere around here? And does it change signs? Yeah. Doesn't the rate go from positive rates to negative rates? So it equals zero and changes signs somewhere around here. So how do we find that? Well, could we set this equal to zero and solve it using technology? Could we set this equal to zero and solve a technology? Once we use that technology to find the answer, you will get that as t is about 2.232 minutes would be about, which if you look at the picture, does that reasonable? 2.23 means reasonable where that crosses maybe-ish. And it kind of correlates. Last question. For what values of t is the water level rising? So I want the water level rising. What does water level rising mean? The water level rising. Well, wouldn't that mean that I'm looking for my rate greater than zero. Think of it as your velocity. If you think back to velocity, don't you want your rate growing? Don't you want your rate going up? Don't you want your values of it increasing? Or you can think of values, the amount increasing. For water levels rising, doesn't that mean the amount increasing? The amount increasing. And if I have amount increasing, that means amount derivative, positive. So I want my derivative of amount positive, which is this. So where, on what, for what interval is that? Well, can you see where is the derivative positive? Well, isn't it positive from here to that point right there? Isn't that the interval for which the derivative is positive? And we already found that 2.32 already. So isn't the answer from 0 to 2.232? would be the answer interval style of which the yellow part, which the graph, the rate, is positive. If I want to know when the water level is going down, isn't it from here to 9? Because the rates are negative. The amount is shrinking. Hopefully that all helps.